Today, the Department of Justice indicted a Russian woman with ties to Putin for using a misinformation campaign on social media to sow discord in the U.S. ahead of the midterm elections. Two of the issues she used to divide us were race relations and the kneeling of football players. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Um, I'm going to take a little break right here, talk about one of our sponsors, freeprints.com. If you're like me, you want to be able uh, to sometimes print out photos, not just email folks or airdrop those photos, uh, then you need to have a source. Well, freeprints.com allows you to get 1,000 photos, 1,000 four by six photos that you can actually print out at a nominal cost. Uh, they'll be shipped directly to you. You can print not just from your phone, but also from Instagram, Facebook, or even Twitter as well. It is uh, the top uh, app out there, some 100,000 five-star ratings. If you go to Google Play or go to iTunes, you can actually download their app, freeprints.com. But do me a favor, when they ask what you hear about them, what's the promo code? Put in the name Roland, R-O-L-A-N-D, so they know that our followers, our viewers, are the ones uh, where, where they actually saw this. And so we will certainly appreciate you do that. And so uh, support those who are supporting us. So I want you to support freeprints.com. One of the messages from Russian interference in 2018 elections pushed Judicial Watch's claim that voter fraud was rampant in, quote, blue states without voter ID. Joining us now is Terrell Starr, a senior reporter at The Root and an expert on Russia. Terrell, how you doing? Doing great. Thank you for having me. Uh, it is clear, anybody who understands Putin, he believes, uh, frankly, in white supremacy. Uh, and he has got a partner in crime in Donald Trump. And it's clear that the Russians and Donald Trump has done nothing to stop them from meddling in American elections. Right, absolutely. And one thing that we have to consider in all of this is that on the American side, what has the White House done to educate the public about disinformation campaigns? In fact, Mr. Trump, he consistently, uh, for a long time, has denied Russian interference at all. Then he kind of stutter steps and says, well, yeah, maybe they did. Ultimately, uh, and I've reported on this throughout the year, is that the American uh, election system, whether it be cybersecurity with our critical infrastructure, or through uh, disinformation campaigns, uh, our, our American uh, states are very much unprepared for it. And particularly through media, if you noticed, if you read some of the reports on this recent um, indictment, it's the, on these recent charges, is that a lot of the American media have been using these Russian bots, uh, Twitter accounts, and inserting them into stories. And so there is a media education that not only uh, readers and viewers need to partake in, but also media uh, producers like myself, like you and others, who need to look at what type of information uh, a, uh, an account is producing, whether or not that person is real or not. So this is pretty much a new stage in our, you know, in our media era where we have to be a lot more careful about what we're consuming. But unfortunately, uh, the leadership from the White House seems not to uh, take it seriously. And during these midterms, we very well uh, could suffer for that. And of course, to have the Department of Justice take this, take, make this move, I mean, it's critically important uh, because Vladimir Putin also recently gave a speech where he said uh, that America's uh, iron grip uh, on the world, uh, frankly, is loosening, is almost uh, extinct. I mean, this is a man who, again, wanted uh, to destabilize the United States, and he clearly favored Donald Trump. And he's gotten somebody who's attacked NATO, who's attacked many of our other allies. And the fact that Donald Trump refused to even give states any level of direction when it came to uh, trying to protect the voting system, it shows that he doesn't care. In fact, he still is insisting China and others uh, have been involved in this when the intelligence agencies in America have said, no, it's the Russians. Well, that's very true. But one thing you have to realize is that, like, uh uh, President Vladimir Putin, uh, Donald Trump is pretty much somebody who's turned the White House into a kleptocracy, just like uh, Putin has turned Russia into a kleptocracy. Uh, Trump is very much, he has authoritarian te uh, tendencies. The only reason why America has not declined even faster is that we do have a civil society. We do um, have structures in government that protect against uh, overpowerful and overzealous uh, executive office. That's just not the case in Russia. And so you see Trump as somebody who really wants to be a dictatorial character. But again, the only thing that's maintaining that is our civil society. 
Now, and I, and I talked to a lot of my colleagues about this, particularly my white journalist colleague. Ultimately, uh, what is America learning about its own racial issues? So we can spend so much time talking about President uh, Putin and what he's done through the Kremlin to uh, approve uh, disinformation campaigns, cyber attacks. But ultimately, what about the racial issues that are going on here? Because ultimately, all that's doing is stoking up and really taking advantage of issues that took place long before Russia became involved. And so that's the wider conversation that we must have. And I think the number one culprit in not really leading the conversation on this has been mainstream media. And so you can point to Russia, you can point to the Kremlin or wherever uh, or whatever entity in Russia you choose. But ultimately, these are people who are choosing to believe this disinformation. So what about them? What about their education? And that comes down to having very difficult conversations about race that people are not willing to have. And ultimately, that's something that you can't leave at Russia's doorstep. All right, Terrell Starr, I appreciate it. And one reason I wanted to have you on, uh, because it's important for us to show that there are black people who are experts oh. <laughs> in Russia beyond Condoleezza Rice. And I know you're working on a book uh, on that, so I appreciate it, brother. Oh, thank you very much.